Good morning. This is Friday, uh, July the 24th, and yesterday we talked about spiritual maturity out of Ephesians chapter 4. Today we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 4 again at some other verses, and we're going to talk about spiritual life. We talked about maturing, and then we're going to talk about the spiritual life that we have in Christ. So let's begin with prayer. Father, thank you so much for this new day for the new grace and the new blessings that we have because you don't deal with leftovers. Thank you for your spirit that guides us and leads us and nudges us and talks to us and teaches us all things. May we be filled with your spirit today as we empty ourselves and be blessed as we walk in the truth of your word and the truth of your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Ephesians chapter 4, we're going to start with verse 17. That's where we kind of left off right in there yesterday. We're going to begin by talking about a new direction, a new direction for our life. You see, when we become saved, when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior through faith and our sins are forgiven and the Holy Spirit that comes in and dwells within us, the direction of our life changes the desires of our life changes. So in verse 17 it says, Now this I say and testify to the Lord that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of the, their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of their hearts. They have become calloused and have given themselves up to sensuality greedy to practice every kind of impurity. This is the way people who are in their sin nature, this is the way they live. They may not realize it. It seems normal to them. Everybody's doing it. It's the way society runs. And so it's, it's the life of a lost person, an unbeliever. But it says in verse 20, but that is not the way you learned Christ. Paul's saying when you became a Christian, when you learned about Jesus, you learned that there's a different life. I remember years ago, a teenager in Memphis at Broadway Baptist Church, her name was Bobby, and uh, she got saved and started coming to our church. And I remember hearing her say one time that before she got saved, she thought all there was to life was drugs, alcohol, and sex. Because that's all she knew. Every adult that she knew was involved in that. That's all she heard at school. She didn't think there was anything else to life until she was asked to attend a Bible study after school uh, by some Christians, and they befriended her. And she came, and she saw different people. And that's what we're talking about here. We learn about Jesus, and our life changes. And it should be so different. That, that people who aren't saved are amazed and they desire the difference and hope that we have. It says, verse 21, Assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self. He's saying just stop your old life. That's what repentance is, just stopping your old life. People say we can't do it, we can't stop. Yes, you can. It's just that we don't want to bad enough. I've met enough people in my life. I'm 65, going on 66. I've met enough people in my life who have testified that they just stopped their sin. We've just grown up being told that we can't do anything about it. But God says we can through His power, through the Holy Spirit. Put off the old self which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. You see, God's saying we can put it off. We can stop. It's not going to be easy. There will be withdrawals, and there will be times when we uh, relapse and have to ask for forgiveness and, and move on. I wasn't perfect, and I'm not perfect now, but I wasn't perfect when I first became a Christian. I still, God still reveals things to me, and He says, You need to get this out of your life. Why? So that I can walk with him in purity and holiness. 
verse 23, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. You see, born-again believers have a changed life. And we're supposed to stop the old man and allow the Spirit of God to change us from within. <clears throat> this new person, verse 25, says, Having therefore put away the falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor. We're not supposed to be deceitful. We're not supposed to be lying anymore. That's the old man. We're supposed to speak truth. For we are members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. We're not supposed to explode with anger and just blow up all over everything like a volcano. We can be uh, bothered by things. We can be angry that things happened. But we handle it with self-control, with patience, with gentleness, with love, with the fruits of the Spirit. There's a different way we handle things that bother us. It says, do not let the sun go down on your anger. Seek forgiveness and give forgiveness every day. Don't let it pass. Confess sins every day. Because if we don't, verse 27 says, and give no opportunity to me excuse me, opportunity to the devil. You see, when we don't stop our sinning, confess, forgive, seek forgiveness, live in the Spirit, we're giving Satan an opportunity to work in our lives and to use us for his honor and glory so that he can laugh at God. Verse 28 says, Let the thief no longer steal. Stop it but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. You know, God blesses us so we can bless others. He doesn't bless us to have a big bank account, take care of things, and live in the lap of luxury. He blesses us to be a blessing to others. It says, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for the building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. <clears throat> My heart is so grieved over and over as I hear how supposedly Christians talk nowadays. The language they use, the words they use, the things they call each other, how they berate each other. That's not the way it's supposed to be. That's the old man that we're supposed to stop and do away with. That's not the Holy Spirit. And when we find ourselves in a situation like this, there's only two answers to the question of why we're doing this way. Number one, we're either not a believer to start with, we're just a, a church member and we're just trying to live a good life and we can't do it. And we need to give our lives to Jesus. There's no Holy Spirit in our life to change us. That's one possibility. Or the other possibility is we have the Holy Spirit, but we're grieving Him and not allowing Him to work in our lives. We're resisting the Holy God that saved us and His work in our lives. That's a scary thought. Either one is a scary thought, but those are the questions we have to ask ourselves if we live the lifestyle of talking this way. He says, let none of it come out of your mouth. You're supposed to edify. You're supposed to encourage. You're supposed to build up. You're supposed to share love. You're supposed to be compassionate. And not all this other stuff, which is generated by the old man, by pride and self. He says in verse 30, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. He's, he's holding up the old person the way we used to be in our sin before we knew Jesus. And then he's holding up the spirit life, a life filled with the Holy Spirit and how it should look. And he says, here's the difference. When you 
accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're accepting the Holy Spirit and a new life, and this is what it should look like. Okay? <clears throat> when we don't uh, take care of things like bitterness and anger and wrath in our lives, we're allowing the old man to live. It's not the Holy Spirit. When we see that in our lives, that is flesh. That is the old man. And we need to stop it like Jesus said. You say, well, I just can't. I remember in my family we had a member that used to say, well, you just don't know what they did to me. Well, that doesn't matter. What did Jesus do for you? What did the Holy Spirit do to you? That's the question. And Jesus wants to have nothing to do with bitterness and anger and wrath like that when it's tied to pride, when it's tied to self, when it disobeys God, when it disbelieves God. He has nothing to do that. We need to be careful about what of the old man we try to hold on to. Because God's not going to bless our life. We may think He is, but He's not. Then in verse 32, we have a new reputation be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. We have a reputation of being kind and good and loving, forgiving, just as Jesus was kind and good and loving and forgiving toward us. I pray that you have this new life in Christ. I pray that you have a new reputation in Christ. Strive to let God build a new man in you by removing the old one first. Be blessed today as you strive to live like Jesus.